I wanted to introduce our Entrepreneur Jam. Now, we started this last year at SKUCon, and it was a really intriguing format, and we wanted to continue with it this year. And the concept of it is very simple. We've invited three distributor entrepreneurs to come up to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their business, and then present a challenge, something that's not going well for them, and present it not only to you, but also to our panelists here of experts. And the thing is, is that each of the presenters have five minutes, they've got a timer here, and then after each of the five minute presentations, our panelists here have got 10 minutes in total to provide some sage counsel. Now, my math is correct, we have three of them, so that's 15 minutes in total per presenter. Three times 15 is 45. We should have about 10 or 15 minutes left for you, the audience, that might have been chewing on some of these challenges, and you can get up and you can provide some feedback or ask some questions of the distributor entrepreneurs. I will say what I love about this and what worked, I think, very well last year is that our presenters are just like everyone that's in the room here. There's a lot of vulnerability here. There's a lot of nervousness. And I love the fact that they've chosen to come up and speak in front of 300 people and presenting their challenges. And I think that's really what really propels us forward as creative professionals in this business, is not only talking about the success factors that make us awesome, but also the things that we suck at, and being vulnerable and open about that. So, without further ado, we are going to, well, I will make a very, very brief introduction. We've got Brandon McKay at Snugs USA, who is one of our panelists. We have Anita Emoff, all the way from Ohio, with Boost Rewards. There we go, woo! And we've got Chris Ferreter, all the way from Miami, with a very cool beard that he was talking to me about last night. I said, hey, I'm from Toronto, I can't grow a cool beard like that, it's kind of a mountain man style, but... I forgot my entourage. Yeah, exactly. Um, each of these uh, panelists have got a real rich history of experience in the promotional products industry, and with that, we are going to welcome, up our welcome Emmy Larkin, who is our first presenter. She's going to come up, and we're going to get the timer started. And I hope you enjoy. Good? Can you hear me now? All right, awesome. So my name is Emmy Larkin. My company name is Brand Me and I'm, I'm out of uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. So five years ago, I completely got thrown into, the, into this industry as a joke. I uh, was just out of college with a marketing degree and I knew nothing about promo. And what happened was, at the time, boyfriend, now husband, was putting up digital billboards in Fargo, North Dakota, which is complete polar opposite of Scottsdale, Arizona, which is where I live now. And he came to me and said, hey, listen, our salespeople are going out there, they're selling the ads on the board, but they're coming back and they're saying, the customers are asking for promotional products, they can tie in into the board um, ads that we're running for them. Can you help? And I went like, okay, what is promotional products? I just got out of college with a marketing degree and nobody had any mention of promo. I heard TV ads, radio ads, magazines, the usual suspects for marketing. And so I went, okay, I can help you, I think. And I did the search. So I started doing some research online and boom, popped up Distributor Central. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's where pens and mugs and notepads come from. Okay, I can probably figure this out. And so for the first two years, I kind of just floated. I didn't know what I was doing. I was on autopilot. I was. I had no um, experience in merchandising whatsoever, no mentors. So it was just me, myself, and I. And one day I was standing in my kitchen and I had some overruns for some project I, projects I had done. And it was literally mugs and pens. And I thought to myself, this stuff is not getting me excited. Like, why am I really doing this? It's a logo, it's a phone number, and that's it. And that's what I was doing. And um, I thought, that there's gotta be just a better way that I can make this exciting so I can use it. If I'm not using it, it's the end customer using it for the businesses I'm working with. 
And so this is how desperate I was. I went onto Google and I typed how to source badass promotional products. That's my desperation level. I didn't know what to do. And Mark and Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but boom popped up this ebook that I believe was called Million Dollar Baby or something along the lines. And I thought, oh, there's gotta be something juicy in there. It's a, it's a good title. I'm gonna learn something that I didn't know. And so I didn't find out what I was looking for, but what I discovered was Common Skew. And I got introduced to a demo because I downloaded the ebook, so they got my info and I got signed up for the demo. And I was like, okay, like this is really cool. I was already struggling with how to present my um, ideas to my clients in a more creative way. And so I got introduced to Common Skew. I'm like, okay, that's it. That's, that's an answer prayer on the back end of stuff. And so, after I did that, um, jumped on, and here's what I discovered. I discovered this tribe of people that was doing things just the way I had imagined, but I went like, shit, I really gotta step up my game because these people are no joke. Everyone was doing exactly what I had envisioned, I just didn't know how to arrive at that point. And so I rebranded, so I went from solid distribution, which was actually an open LLC that I took over that my husband at the time had to just run this business as a joke and I rebranded to Brand Me. So it was clean, it was simple, and it was oriented towards the target market that I was trying to, to reach. So after I rebranded, I kind of arrived at these crossroads. Um, I'm passionate about the retail side of merchandise. I don't wanna be everything to anyone. So I'm trying to niche out into a more retail-inspired merchandise where I curate collections. So my two problems that I'm struggling with, which is question number one is how should I position the, my brand so I can find those clients that want those curated collection, collections of retail inspired merch. And my second question is how can I convert those current corporate buyers that are literally used to buying exhibit A on the left and I'm trying to take them over to exhibit B which is something that's super retail and will give you way more ROI. You'll give more ROI to their clients and, and their businesses. So I don't know if I'm bad check crazy for wanting to niche out so deep into something like that that's totally retail warranted and say no to business that, well, let's face it, 5,000 keychains could have some good profit margins, but at the end of the day, that's not what I really want. It's not my client base that I'm trying to reach, but I just don't know the steps that I should be taking to kind of niche out um, to reach those clients and then educate them more. Like, I don't know if I should be doing, do I start with a website where I put a lingo together that literally says this is all we do. It's all retail inspired merchandise and I'm not doing the what people are used to doing, which is more on, the cheaper stuff, and I don't know how to go about doing that. I don't know if I should be hitting up social media, do I put kits together, like that's where I'm struggling with of how do I niche out. So, thank you. All right, so can we go back, do you wanna start, we'll start with number one. Yep. Um, so how should I position my brand to find clients that want retail inspired merch? Um, so one of the things that I would suggest is spending time browsing retail stuff, right? So when you're out shopping with your husband or whatever, what I'll do is I'll be in Starbucks, I'll say, oh, that cup is unique, that's different, that's not something that everybody's offering. Or, you know, you're in Target and you see some different style shirt that everybody's wearing, or you're on social media sort of picking those things up. Um, so do that and become mm -hmm. a subject matter expert in those things on what you can offer, right? Because you can't offer every single one of those things just because right. you can't access it but study it and know it and then lead your pitches with that. Okay. So when you go and pitch these people, going back to the whole context talk, is start with those things. So when we go pitch people, we, have this, we do the same thing, right? We try and stay up on pop culture and social media and those things have sort of differentiated us from everybody else because we don't lead with pens and pad folios and you know, ceramic mugs. We would never do that because everybody who comes in behind us is giving that exact same pitch, right? So then it becomes you know, a race to the bottom, it becomes a price war. But if you become an expert on say, I mean, this is going back to Miami, I'm in Miami, so crop tops, right? Crop tops mm -hmm. were the thing all last year. I didn't even know what a crop top was as of last year, but I spent months just figuring out where we could get them, Googling, 
I could tell you anything you want to know about crop tops now. Um, but find the people who offer these things, where you can source them. Um, you know, you might even go outside of the standard supplier sites and sort of Google them and figure that sort of stuff out. Okay. Um, but I think just staying up on top of trends and leading with that mm -hmm. when you go into these pitches is something that makes you become a subject matter, or people look to you as a subject matter expert mm -hmm. of those things, and then they'll come to you when they have those needs. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. I can do that. Sure. <laughs> so I think trend and retail is two different things. I think this industry brings a lot of trendy coolness, and I think your creativity, if my voice like cuts out on you, I'm sorry, we're in bad luck. Um, <laughs> I think being trendy and retail inspired, I think it's hard to bring the retail industry into this. Okay. I, and I think there's some clients that are, that are positioned for that, and some co corporate environments that are positioned to, on that, but I think I would do my research on the brands that truly feel connected to that kind of environment. But I'm a big component of, I love trend, and I love retail, and I love fashion. And that was the first thing I jumped on, literally, when I jumped into this, I'm like, ooh, retail, ooh, trend, ooh, I want to bring that in. But it doesn't always make sense. So you, I, would, I would think about your passion, number one. You know, is this really what you want to do? And why do you want to do it? Why is it you want to bring the retail in? And kind of have that kind of soul conversation with yourself first. And what is it that makes you want to engage into that? And what is it that makes you get excited about it? And when your passion starts delivering aligned with what he talked about, mm -hmm. I think that comes natural. So that's my thing. Sounds good. All right, so uh, on this question, I would look at it and say I agree with everything that they would have to say, but uh, we have some really good partners and a partner that's in this room. And if you want to look and have the essence of retail, then look retail. Mm -hmm. Pick really good strategic logo placement and subtleties, mm -hmm. and also look at the packaging. Yeah. So subtle logos yeah. is very retail. Mm -hmm. There's lots of big retail brands out there that are very subtle with their logo. Yeah. You don't have to have a billboard across your chest. No. And if you want to knock it out and you want to go and drive it home, yeah. it's all in the packaging. Yeah. And retail is packaging right now because yeah. everything is pretty much across the board, very continuous as far as what it will do and how it will work. But those things that you pick up off the shelf, you pick them off the shelf because they look cool. Yeah, absolutely. Period. Yeah. And so I would focus on local yeah. style and placement yeah. and packaging. Okay. And any thoughts on the how to convert that old mindset of the corporate buyer that is so used to buying? the same old stuff? How do we yeah, bring so them over? This is a good one also. Um, the way I sort of position it is, you know, would you rather spend a dollar and give away 500 items that somebody is never gonna hold on to, or would you rather buy $105 items that somebody's gonna be, is gonna really have a profound impact on them, right? Like, wow, this is really cool. No one else is giving this out. This is the kind of thing that I wanna take home and keep, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an easy sell to a customer because that's what they want is the people to hold on to it, use it, constantly be reminded of their brand. Um, so I think that's a great way to do it. Um, and I think, you know, you sort of have to take them back and say, you know, this is what is up and coming in either retail or fashion or social, you know, pop culture, this is what people want, and you're trying to give them something that they're gonna take home and continue to use. So I think you have to, like I said, going back to being a subject matter expert, saying, hey, this is what's popular. The socks, great thing, stride line, that's an awesome thing to have go before us and, and go along with this. So let's just say a basketball camp calls you, hey, I got 100 kids coming out, I'm gonna give them a T-shirt. Well, you know, all kids wanna wear now is, is those custom athletic crew socks. Um, pitch that, right, because no one else is pitching that. Anybody can do t-shirts, but if you come in and say, hey, I can get a free spec sample delivered to you right away, show them that, that's an easy way to convert somebody over, and it's probably got better margins for you. Um, okay. Yeah, what kind of problems are you trying to solve? I mean, what is it, what's their goal, what's their objective? Their you objective know? or my objective? Their, their objective. So you know, it's about them. I'm bumping heads with my current customers when I'm trying to take them from A to B. Some of them get it, but it's the younger demographic. And I'm, what I'm trying to get to is when I'm starting to look, look for new customers, I'm trying to take your, I'm gonna take your ideas and apply them so I can get that demographic that I'm trying to reach, which is the people that wanna do something that is cool and useful and 
what Chris was talking about. It's just in general, it's it's trendy and it and, it, and it's fun. So. I just was struggling with how do I reach those customers and penetrate them so they can understand that this is where we're headed and that's the past. But my I didn't advice, know how to position myself. My advice myself. to you is don't. Yeah, exactly. That's don't don't what chase people say. that you don't want to chase. Yeah. Uh, specifically in our business model, we are not the most economical company out there to choose. But the type of customers that we attract want something more than just that transaction. Yeah. So if you want experiences and you want to have a relationship, mm -hmm. choose customers that you want to talk to. If you're dreading having to call someone on the phone because they don't get it, yeah, I guess they're not going to get it. And it seems like a lot of tech companies are doing the stuff that we're kind of discussing right now. And they're, they've been very hard to reach. Um, they're big. They're typically the ones that have a little bit more budget. But they get it. But I've been struggling reaching them. Any tips on how, to, how do you find the guy? Because every time I call or send kids, they're not going to the right person. Yeah, there's, there's no so, magic formula to find <laughs> no the magic guy. No magic formula, I know? figure, but uh, I thought it's worth the ask. But persistence and, and just keeping on asking for, all right, you're not the person, but who might be able to help me um, until you find the right person is, is sort of the way I would do that. And, and going back to that, where you say people are always asking for the same standard things, one of the practices that all our salespeople do is we say, hey, why don't you send me your logo and I'll put together 20 ideas that maybe you didn't think of mm -hmm. and then see what you think of them, right? And the amount of wows or, oh my God, I never thought of that, that we get from that um, is amazing. So then when they come up to their next event, they're like, well, they came up with something cool. Let's do something different. Um, so that's a technique I would advise that you try is just, hey, send me over your logo and you know, find a designer that can help you out and just put together 20 new trending items in the industry um, okay. and send it over. Okay. Um, and I think you'll get a lot of positive reaction from that. I'll definitely do that. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I think that covers my questions. And I appreciate your help. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmy. I love I loved the rawness and the quickness of it. And thank you, panelists, for being honest and with it. And, um, and what I, what I re really look forward to is having a little bit of time at the end where the audience can then participate. So if there's any of you that are sitting there feeling maybe some of the same challenges that Emmy is now going through in terms of positioning, um, by all means, we welcome you at the mic uh, once we're done with the other two. Anyways, I'm going to invite Sam Cabert. I met Sam, I don't know how long ago, a few years ago, and I tell you, this guy is, has a ton of ideas, super creative, and uh, I always feel super energized after speaking with him, and that may contribute to some of the challenges that you've had. So I'll let you take it away there, Sam. Cool. Thank you, Mark. All right. Um, so thank you, everyone, um, for dealing, or dealing with listening to me, because um, this is going to be all about my identity crisis. So I'm going to set the stage um, going into it with that. So you'll see on the top left over there, that's uh, me growing out at Chico State. So um, basically, I started a sandal company. I'm not going to get into the whole idea of why I create a sandal company to then go sell, okay, I am going to go into it. So basically, I created, a, there's, a, there's a common expression in the town of Chico called Chico feet. Basically, it means the bottom of your foot is black or dirty, right? So it's just a dirty foot. So long story, I grew up in a family business. Um, we do office supplies. My mom does some promotional products. And then I had this idea when I told, I had a conversation with her, hey, I'm doing my internship in San Diego. She's trying to get me to sell neat feet sandals down there. Like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. I've tried selling it for you guys. I don't, I'm do, going down there to do an internship, right? So, and I got an idea to um, take the common expression and attach it to a tangible product. So that's what the Chico Feet Sandal is and was, and it left impressions in the sand of the words Chico Feet. So I ran that for a while. Um, that's a picture of me graduating later that day. Right below that is a picture they did um, a little news story, whatever. You know, so I ran the business, I went back to Chico, I did that for about a year or so. I had a couple of interns um, through the school, so it was really great experience. Uh, the, the challenge I had there was Chico's a small town and there are huge brands out of Chico, like um, the ladies would know lulus.com, they're huge in fashion, they're out of, Chico's, I, or ch out of Chico. I had a meeting with them, Sierra Nevada, no, there's whatever. So I came back home, Silicon Valley, the next picture with um, the puppy on the airplane, all that, and you know, 
was going to do office supplies. I was like, all right, I'm going to do office supply sales. I'm going to you know, start to take over the family business and go that route, and I'll still mess around with promo for a little bit. So we did a rebranding, and we came up with this slogan, work is good, and we had, we're big in our dogs. Um, my dad actually breeds golden retrievers now and whatnot, so we're big into dogs. Um, so we did the dog flying on the, the paper airplane and stuff like that, and I, I just, didn't like office supplies. So I did that for about a year and then I went um, promo full time. And then you can see Value BP Marketing Group, more puppies right there. Basically, SKUCon a couple years ago, I was like, uh, I walked away and created a brand in like a month. Um, value Business Products goes by Value BP. So I was like, Value BP Marketing Group, kind of like Staples and Staples Promotional, right? And then um, after SKUCon last year, I started What Up Silicon Valley, that uh, little emoji thing. That's a podcast I do with a buddy of mine. We do a ton of young professionals networking events and have good contacts in Silicon Valley, so I was just kind of motivated to do that. Then Swag Sam is um, my personal brand that was always a joke you know, when I was in the office supply industry. The other people would call me Swag Sam because I sold swag and everyone else is selling like furniture or whatever else it is, right? And now you see Brand Hero. So what's going on here, right? You know. Um, Basically, Value BP Marketing Group was a Band-Aid, and now that I'm doing so, um, going so deep in What Up, you know, it's kind of like, okay, let's get a better brand. So here's a little bit about What Up. You can see um, this first picture is with Dennis Brown. He's the Super Bowl champion with the 49ers. That was our sev seventh episode, so that was pretty cool. Then Sushi Randy's big in town. Um, and then Al Guido to the right of that, he's the president of the 49ers, just did a podcast with him. We're partners with the Silicon Valley Business Journal, so they come on our show, that's the goofy hat. Then um, the guy that created the wave, and then Rivas Dunlap, we performed live at the San Jose Improv, um, so that's a picture from that. And at the bottom, now we switch to daily. So starting in January this uh, year, you know, two weeks ago, we have other young professionals having um, their different shows, so we're more like a network, right? And the idea is the larger we bring what up for all of us, it, or larger what up gets, it's good for all of our personal brands. There are other entrepreneurs in the area. Um, so over here, challenge. So basically my challenge is the identity crisis. Um, sorry for the ugly slide, by the way. Um, I haven't done slides in a while, and I should have had the VA do it. But uh, all right, so am I the what up guy? Am I swag Sam? Am I, so I, I've, been come, I've been to every single uh, SKUCon, and everyone knows Bobby Lee Hugh and everyone in the industry, and you know I've always loved his storytelling. So that's part of the brand hero thing. And uh, you'll see I'm going to go down a little bit. Mojo Mondays, that's my like pump you up, Monday podcast, quick hits, kind of goal setting, professional de development. On the right, that's the OG show I do with my co-host where we interview movers and shakers. Now in the middle, Brand Hero is all about marketing and branding and brand strategy. That's going to be my big one for um, you know, telling client stories and really driving business. So that's the new one. So with that, I'm just out of time. So hopefully that's a little bit enough, uh, but identity crisis. You want me to start yeah, this start one? this one. <laughs> oh, you got my head spinning, What's that? Man. So you got my head spinning. Yeah. I told um, you you'd be energized after <laughs> listening to him. So, Listen to Mojo Mondays. <laughs> so, so we kind of went through a little bit of the same. You know, we have uh, some pretty heavily creative people in our organization that has a lot of ideas, my game off, and um, had us going in very many different directions. One of the things I would say to you, if you can find a connection, it's not that it's bad. It's just that this is a mess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Okay. Well aware. But if you can find a connection in between the things that you do and then present that connection of who you are instead of all these things that you're kind of just throwing at the board and mm -hmm. saying, well, maybe, maybe one of them are going to sit, but instead you're just confusing the heck out of us. You know? yeah. And I know you're great at all of these things, but just, just, just pick a lane you know? or, or pick, a, pick a brand that encompasses these three cool things about you. You know, and then present them when it's when it's obvious instead of just presenting all of it. Yeah, um, good feedback. I mean, what what is your ultimate goal in the end? Do you want to be into promotional products, or do you want to be sort of you know this podcast personality and, and sort of an entrepreneur type guy? I mean, I guess because the, the, first of all, when do you sleep? A. Uh, <laughs> But well, that, that's what my co-host asked me. He goes, dude, do you ever sleep? Because, like, you'll get emails and texts for, at 3, a, 3 a.m. So, so it's, a, it's I, just I a, a lot. But I think, so Brand Hero is the promotional products company that you want to do, right? And Swag Sam is, like, your 
sort of moniker in the, in the area, I would say? Yeah, I'm working on it. So let me go back a slide, actually, for this sushi uh, one. So you see uh, Sushi Confidential? Yeah. Right below it says, Buy Sushi Randy. So yeah. basically, we had it on a podcast, and I think everyone in this room could relate to it. You know, he'd say that anywhere he went, he showed up with sushi. So they called him Sushi Randy. So when he brought his, or when he opened his restaurant, naturally, he wanted his personal brand. Well, where we can relate is all our friends think of us as the swag people. Anywhere I go, I'm giving my friends the cool swag, you know, what up stride line socks. All, we're known for our stride line socks. Shout out, stride lines are awesome. So, um, yeah. All right, so but, but when people think of me, they think of me as Chris from Sobe, right? So it, what I would say is either go with Swag Sam and get rid of Brand Hero or go with Brand Hero and get rid of Swag Sam, right? Because now you're just confusing them. Um, in almost, it feels like two brands, but it's really the same brand and then it's you, right? So Swag Sam would work, right? You, you know, let's hit up Swag Sam. He's gonna get us something to give out at, you know, the next trade show or something like that. Um, I just think you've gotta get rid of one of those two and consolidate it and then use that with your, with your podcast, right? Or not, let's say Brand Hero by Swag Sam, exactly. Um, so it could be the presenting sponsor or something along those lines, but my advice would be immediately to get rid of one of those two and then concentrate strictly on that. My question is, uh, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't think you have a brand identity. I think you have a career identity. Yeah, uh, exactly, and I forgot to ask your, or answer your other question. So, um, good friend Kirby Hossman, uh, you know, I look up to him in the industry for what he's done in the uh, personal branding and that type of thing, and for me, you know, I'm not the biggest Gary Vee guy, but we all know Gary Vee, so let's use that as an example. I'm huge into goal setting, professional development, motivational type stuff, so I want to be the swag, you know, personal brand type thing. That's not like a power statement, but you guys get it, so. Does that answer it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean. So I think you need, I think you, I, I think you need to back up and try to restate that. All right. So that not just me sitting here, you know, that everyone in the room can understand. Are you asking us a brand question or are you asking us an identity question? It's an identity because I'm trying to tie them all together somehow. I don't know. So I'm a very simple creature. I'm not. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that in my history I've been very unsuccessful when I deviate from where I'm successful. So I can chase it with money, but regardless of the amount of money or time that I throw at my venture, I won't be successful at it because I, I, I have a deviation of interest. So I would say you have an identity problem, and that identity, identity problem needs to be answered by saying, what do I want to do? You know, if being a podcast guy yeah. is what you want to do and you want to create content for five days a week and then throw up a, a di you know, a, a remote for Saturday mm -hmm. and do something really fun. And I think that's awesome. Build a business around being a podcast guy, you know, but if you want to be the swag guy, you know, and, and I don't, you know, it reminds me of like, you know, uh, like on Breaking Bad, you know, like call Saul, you know, like there's nothing bad with being the swag guy. He's a yeah. good attorney, you know, call him. Yeah. So, and it's very unique, and I think it's very catchy, and if that's your passion, then you know, change your passion, but to, this is very, you know, like Anita said, this is very confusing, because I don't think your challenge is asking the right question. That's, that's good feedback, appreciate that. But you have tons of energy, obviously, standing here, and, <laughs> and you have very unique brands, and I just think you just need to choose the horse you wanna ride. Yeah, you know, one of the things um, I'm so grateful to be, you know, presenting to all you guys and getting the feedback from everyone, it's just, um, I've talked to people outside the industry and not so much in marketing or whatever. And to me, like, Swag Sam doesn't seem like it's a legit business. I can't imagine my admins at, like, big companies, like, oh, call Swag Sam's, you know, like, it just, it, you could be, but if I want to go super douchey and do that, like, I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> just being real. Well, then you answer the question. Well, the so, question. Uh, exactly. so maybe I do. Badass the brand. I'm all about badassing the brand. So, I mean, that's what we do. But yeah. Well, I think it's awesome. Swag Sam has got to go then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Or that is it. Yeah, one of the two. So, cool. It sounds like that's bad. I don't think energy will be your shortfall. No, I don't think so. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just think one. I just think you got to pick one or the other between Swag Sam and Brand Hero. I don't think they can coexist, from what you've told us. And I, I would choose one. And I don't think Swag Sam comes off that. Like I'm, I'm sure we could go and find much douchier people who have been very successful. Uh, For sure. You know. Yeah. So. Cool. It's also about building trust. You know, I mean, in your own personal brand. So I'm. There is not a lot of trust being built here either. Oh, another thing too. No, never mind. <laughs> Sam, you got you got yeah, two minutes and forty five oh, yeah, seconds, oh, oh. man. The floor is yours. The floor is mine. Okay, cool. So, um, well, I mean, Swag Sam's more like the persona. It's the character. It's not so much like if you look at the Mojo Mondays logo, and it's just like Mojo Mondays with Swag Sam or Brand Hero with Swag Sam. But like the business, I don't think I would go like the Sushi Confidential buy Sushi Randy. Like I don't think I would go Brand Hero. Buy Swag Sam. I think I would just go brand hero. So yeah. invest your time in that. It sounds like you invest more time in Swag Sam and these, in these podcasts than you. Or, or, or if that's what you want to do, invest your time in that and concentrate on that and make that your business. Or say I want to concentrate on brand hero and then use that story as what you podcast about or bring that in. Right. Most of the most of the best podcasters that we listen to built something from nothing. Right. Andy mm -hmm. Purcell is one of our customers. First form. Right. He built first form. He has an amazing following because he built something where he slept on a mattress for 12 years in his supplement store and now he runs a hundred million dollar business because he put in the effort and concentrated on that and now he's giving back to people and sort of doing the podcast route, right? So th that would be my advice, concentrate on the business, build the business and tell that story and I think that. The business is built, like I mean, uh, n not to be <laughs> cocky but I spent like 50% of my time last year on what up and my sales went from like 750 to 712. So I mean, I, what that tells me is I build out the personal brand more, and then once I have a nice like foundation with knowing what my identity is and having systems in place, Wait, you then spent sales. Whoo, you went 50 percent on your personal stuff, and, and sales my declined. sales didn't suffer. Barely suffered. I, I mean, mean they was, declined. That's, that's right? flat to me. I mean, no, that's a decline. I, 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 all I'm saying is when I'm spending that much of my time right, on so then something there, else. Then there's your answer. You don't point. want to grow the business, right? You're okay where it's at and it's sustaining oh, I'm perfect itself. Where it's at, yeah. Okay, so there you go. Then work on your personal brand. Yeah. I think that's the answer. And that's what we're sort of trying to figure out here. But I think that's your answer. If you're comfortable at 750 and you want to stay right there, then co then concentrate on your personal brand. And I think that's the answer for you. No, well that's what I am doing. But what I'm saying is I'm rebranding Value BP because it was a band-aid fix for like yeah. the swag business, because Value BP is the dumbest name. Like it's just it's nothing, right? So I'm trying like, would it make sense to go what up swag? You know, but that, we talked about that and it doesn't really make sense. But it would help, you know, keep it more simple without so many different brands. You know what I mean? Sort it's, of, yeah. Yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> it's all good. But that, that was a lot of good uh, advice and uh, tips, so I appreciate it. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I am having like the best time just watching these guys. It's just, it's, it's awesome. Um, and, and, and I know that uh, Sam's probably like, man, I did the stupid entrepreneur jam, and I've got way more questions. But what I'll say, my observation very quickly is, it's better to have a lot more energy and a lot more ideas than the opposite. So Sam, you're gonna, you're gonna figure that out. And there we go. Um, and, and the idea of, again, we're gonna have the time for some audience participation, then we're gonna go right into lunch where we can you know, sit down with our friends here as well. So very quickly, uh, I wanna do a quick introduction to Kola Svek. Uh, Kola, is gonna talk about her new business and some of the challenges that she's had in creating this new business, Soul and Swag. Um, really, really creative individual, brings a lot of mojo to the industry, and I love the fact that she, she has been so successful but is prepared to come up and talk about the things that are not so successful. Awesome. All right, Thank Cola. You. Am I on? Am I good? Can you hear me now? Um, okay, well thanks, first of all, to Bobby and the whole team for asking me to be a part of this jam. I was honored to be asked and to be here, and even though he made me follow the funny guy, I guess that's okay. Um, so like Mark said, um, I started Soul and Swag just in June of this last year, um, and yes, my name really is Cola, it's spelled just like the pop. No, I don't think my parents were on drugs when they named me, as, as far as I know. 
So get that out of the way. Um, but we started Soul and Swag in June. I grew up in the industry and uh, just kind of fell in love with it. Used to fax orders into suppliers, did all that stuff back in the day. So I really was submerged early on and uh, became passionate about it. I got into the industry about four and a half years ago. And um, yeah, back in May, it was just time for some life changes. So my mom and I, which she's here filming me, of course, um, Angie and I started Soul and Swag in June. We came up with the name and the tagline in less than 72 hours because I needed a business to send my orders through. So when we started, um, you know, there were people that recommended to me, why don't you just take your book of business and go send it through a big house? And I thought about it, and it didn't. There was something that didn't feel right about that. Um, it was I had a, a vision already before we even had the name of the company that I wanted to own my own someday, and I wanted to build something that was empowering and had people work there that loved what they did and understood this industry. Because if you're outside of this industry, people barely even know what it is. So um, of really spreading that, and that's where the tagline kind of came from: was positively different. We're based out of Omaha, Nebraska, and um, for those of you who have never been there, which is probably a lot of you, trends tend to hit the coasts and slowly come to Nebraska. Um, so we want to bring that faster and bring, you know, meeting people like you and um, being around innovators and great people and get that to Nebraska faster, get people doing things differently, which we heard about this morning. Um, so with that being said, just a little bit more about us. We believe different is good. We believe in being a consultant, so um, really of using that word more than a salesperson, um, of learning the story of a brand and then matching brands with suppliers who truly care, which um, I think it's a testament to what Common Skew is doing because that's who's in this room, our suppliers and uh, people who really care. And then we believe in giving back. Um, for those of you who were at SKU Camp and listened to Danny speak, and I asked him, I was like, I want to give back, I want to do that, but I don't have any money. So um, <laughs> we're trying to give back in other ways, giving time right now and eventually being able to do that down the road. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, and then we started creating these soul storyboards. So um, this is a customer that's a nonprofit organization in Omaha that employs the blind and visually impaired. They went through a whole rebrand this year and we helped them do that. So finding products that fit with their brand. Um, then another one that was just kind of corporate gifts. And um, then this one for a local cookie company. And so really my question, my challenge is figuring out the road to growth. Um, just this last week before or after I had done this presentation, we finally have found an office space, we think. Uh, we've been working out of my mom's second bedroom of her apartment, which has been lovely. Uh, it's just a little tight. There's four desks that we've kind of played Tetris with to fit in there. It's been great initially, but um, hopefully the next step is a space and a you know a showroom to have our clients come to. But then what's beyond that? And I have this vision of growing a, a company that people, like I said, want to work for. And we have a lot of fun and um, really helping people tell their story. But what does that actually look like um, on a daily basis, weekly, setting goals, um, hiring staff responsibilities, and then as we bring people on, and I'm meeting more people, my mom is, and getting more clients, client distribution, where does that go? How does it, you know, what do we currently have and what should be distributed to other people? Um, and then any best practices you recommend. So from SEO to social media to outsourcing some of that stuff. So um, yeah, I guess what you've found that's, that's worked, some, some advice on kind of the next steps over the next few months and then into the next couple of years. So that's all I've got. And I'm sure I even got it in the right time. So I think we're going to have to roll this into lunch. <laughs> there's a lot of questions on that. There are. There's like 18 questions in one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so maybe if you could just identify maybe one specific area that you would like a an answer on. Yeah, I guess more just in the next like three to six months of um, you know, hiring people to help. Like right now, I'm working on Sunday afternoons and you know all of this, and I'm fine with that. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I'm doing all the billing and all the back end stuff right now. And then um, obviously my mom and then my aunt works for us and does the order processing. But 
of what makes sense next. Is it hiring a bookkeeper? Is it hiring um, somebody that does inside stuff, trying to find someone that is ready to do outside sales, kind of that part of it in the next three to six months? Um, so or if you've had an example where you're like, well, don't do this. Or something like that. Don't hire no, crappy uh, people. <laughs> yeah. um, no, uh, maybe just top of mind. So one would be, yes, uh, slow to hire, quick to fire. Was, is always been something that I've struggled with. You mm -hmm. get excited about someone. Right. And then if you would have just asked one more question, you would have found out that they were not the right person. Okay. But uh, past that, um, I would look to hire people in areas that you don't want to be responsible in. So I don't love accounting. Mm -hmm. Me neither. I hate we it. We share that. <laughs> so um, to to sit down and to, to dive into a balance sheet or look at a PL, I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you know, it's soul soul sucking for me. <laughs> so you, you look at people that are really creative and really good at that area that are uh, attributes to your weakness, and and I would focus on that. If it was just specifically say, hey, I want to scale in hiring, where should I go first? Mm -hmm. I would hire first for what you don't want to do. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I think when I sort of look at this at the, at the stage you're at um, in terms of staff, first of all, the most important thing to keep in mind is your company culture, right? Because that's something that once it's gone, you can't get it back, right? So, and that starts with the hiring process. So find somebody who sort of fits your mold. Um, and, and we often hire from outside of the industry because we don't want them to come in with certain mindsets from different companies that that's how they should sort of handle certain situations. So we hire from outside the industry and then we sort of mold them into our company culture because uh, you know, we're 15 pe 14, 15 people now, but that's still very important to us is that core culture and making sure everybody believes in it. Um, and then I think at this point, you're probably still too small to start looking at hiring for specific responsibilities, right? So what I, I was in the same spot, it was me, and I did the invoicing, the follow-up, the artwork, the billing, and I hated it, right? I was like, all right, I need to find somebody who, I'm very non-organized, and th I went and found you know, my now business partner who is insanely organized, and he's meticulous, and he's the kind of guy that drives me nuts, but that's what I needed, right? Was mm -hmm. I needed somebody like that to say, all right, I'm gonna follow up with suppliers and then I'm gonna invoice for you so that I could continue to sell and grow the business. Um, but we didn't have particular roles until we probably got to like 10, eight, 10 people. And okay. then we stepped back and we had a huge meeting. We said, what goes into every single process that we do, right? When somebody places an order, what has to happen? And then we divvied up roles. We said, all right, so you're gonna process the order and you're gonna see it through from the proof process to approval and then it's off you and it goes to him who's then gonna invoice it and follow up on payment, right? Um, so I think as you grow, keep a list of all of the things that you have to do to process an order from start to finish and then step back when you get to a certain point where you say, all right, the two of us or the three of us, the four of us can't handle it and start divvying up roles. Okay. Um, awesome. So have you ever owned a business before? Nope. Okay. First time. So I would probably start differently. There was, all, there was this wise man that once told me, I don't care if you gotta operate a popcorn stand, you create a strategic plan. That might be where you wanna start. And just create a strategy around your business first, and then at least you get into that strategy mindset of how to run your business. And then you start attacking tactical items. I can tell you when I step into the business, that was the first thing I did, because it was all over the board. I was like, holy shit, how do, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I went with an association out of, um, out of Ohio, and they helped me through strategic planning and really thinking how to lead and run a company. And I, that's what I would do. I would first get some truly leadership and business advice on strategy. So you can be successful in, in making decisions the right way. Culture is another thing, it's huge. But if you don't know how to run a business and creating strategy around it, it's gonna, in my opinion, that's gonna be tough. Okay, awesome. So yeah, then I guess just some best practices with, um, we've met someone who does some great things in, the, in Omaha with SEO and um, has helped a lot of different types of businesses. And so we've talked to him about 
doing our SEO and helping us with more of that. But on the back end of it, you know, you don't know what's going to happen as he starts helping us with that. Is it going to take off and be great, or is not really anything going to increase for a while? So of, of being ready for that, I guess, that's kind of my hesitation with it. Um, and then anything else, whether it's social media or outsourcing those things to other people. I guess my struggle right now is probably the strategic plan part, part of it, of what comes first? What do I have to do first, and then what's, what's after that? But at the same time, you can't, I can't just not have social media until I get through steps one or two. You know what I'm saying? So really, what are the right steps to take to, to grow a business? I mean, I think the number one thing that I could recommend for you is to build trust with your current clients, right? Mm -hmm. So when you build trust, you know, going back to trust, trust is a major thing because when their need arises, they're going to think of you, right? So right. when something happens to you that you need, you know, something in your life, who do you trust? Your mom or, or someone else, a relative. So you call them first. So when all of a sudden they need T-shirts for an event, mm -hmm. they're going to call you, right? And the one way, we don't spend a ton of money on marketing um, at all, and we do it all by word of mouth and referrals because people don't really have a really good promotional products person that they like. Mm -hmm. And if you make them happy and come through over and over and over, they're more likely to refer you to their friend when they say, hey, who did the t-shirts for that event? Oh, well, I talked to you know, Cola over here. And, and um, so I think word of mouth is the best way to grow a business, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the, in the early stages. Um, so I used to dr drive around Miami and drop off all of our orders just because it put a face to the, to the business, right? Um, and then slowly it just started snowballed and, and now it's, I don't even leave and I'm getting phone calls, hey, so-and-so gave me your name or so-and-so gave me your name. Um, so, so what I, do you do with that then? So they call and they say, so-and-so gave me your name. I sell them product. You do, I mean, I'm just. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> no shit. Um, <laughs> I just mean like, is it is it you? You have this staff now, yeah, so is so it you taking it and doing like the presentation and ideas, or you're working on the idea and the project, and then somebody else actually goes and does the presentation or yeah. Whatever. So now, now I mean, if it's a if it's a core customer or somebody that has huge potential, I'll handle it. But we have inside sales guys who will say, all right, this is sort of a pre-qualified lead. We already know what they want. I'm going to hand it off to him and let him finish it, right? So he okay. doesn't have to go out because he's not comfortable going out and getting that business. But once it's there, he's very confident and he can sort of process it. Um, and now we have a team of sales members where we'll say, you know what, I don't have the time to handle this. I'd rather get the business, so I'll just hand it off to them and let them sort of process right, it. Right, service them. Or, um, yeah. But obviously social media, I mean, you know, you don't have to do anything crazy. Just keep your culture and, your, and reflect your brand in your social media, share products that you've done. And then, you know, SEO, that's the greatest dark arts there is. You bring in 10 companies, you'll hear 10 different things about, mm -hmm. you know, I wish I started an SEO company because I could have just lied my way through a half of these presentations. <laughs> right. um, but just make sure you ask for client referrals of people they work with and get a bunch of opinions on sort of their work. Um, but I think that can be a back-end thing as you start to grow and have some money to spend on marketing. Okay. Um, I, I, would, I would concentrate on your customers now and work on word-of-mouth referrals. How can, you know, do you know anybody else that might use my services? For sure. I'd agree. So if your book of business is Omaha, mm -hmm. focus on Omaha. Yeah. And I don't think you need to focus on SEO if your book of business is Omaha. So you need to build your brand, you need to build your social presence, you need to build your likability, you need to find networking groups, organizations, things that you can get involved in, peer groups. Yeah, which we've been trying to do more of, and that's where it's kind of the, um, I was talking to somebody earlier, the delightfully overwhelming part of it yeah. is it's great. We're meeting a lot of new people in these networking groups, and that's awesome, but then it becomes a thing of how much can I handle and you know each of us that we have before we, you know, I can't do anymore. You can only do so much in a day, so to have somebody else that you know, can help do that part of it um, I think your willingness yeah. to stand up here in front of 300 people is going to do a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you. So I would never shortchange yourself, and I think you have a lot to offer. And again, your willingness you. to stand in front of 300 people and ask these questions, I think you get it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks so much. For thank you. Your thank you. Thank, thank you, Paula. That was... That was awesome. So by my count, we've got eight minutes until lunch. I said that we'd run this like a Swiss train. I know people are hungry. So if there are folks that have comments, uh, questions, uh, 
the feedback, you can either head up to the mic so we can all hear you a little bit better, but if you're in an awkward spot, just yell and we'll repeat the question. Sir. Um, hi there, guys. My name is Z. Um, can you quickly just share your biggest lesson from last year? One big takeaway? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking business? Business, yeah. Catastrophe, Probo, last your year business. Year? <laughs> That's about eight. Um, I, something I continually stick my say, you know, head in the same skunk's hole over and over and over is, for me, being on the supplier side is launching prior to fully vetting not just the process, but like down to having the inventory and how we're going to process that specific order. So. Just premature product launches are by far the thing that I continually stick my head in that skunk's hole. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think one of the biggest lessons that we learned was it's okay to let customers walk sometimes. Um, you know, when you're young, you want to take every piece of business you can get, right? But sometimes there's just these customers that don't fit your business and they end up taking way more time and money to sort of handle than they're actually worth. So you don't necessarily have to say, hey, look, I'm not going to work with you, but you know, price yourself out of it or you know, just there's certain ways to make that happen, but you don't have to handle every piece of business that comes to you if it's a cancer to your business is sort of what I would say. And I think finding your niche in this very crowded space is key. Finding out who you are and build on your strengths and your skill set and use relationship as your power bank. I mean, that's, that is the biggest upper hand, I think, for us, is engaging and creating relationships. Cool. Thank you. And, and thanks for that huge question. That's, uh, <laughs> is a man who's not scared to ask a tough question. <laughs> um, anyone else? Anyone in the center that can't get to the microphone, that, uh, that has some feedback for, uh, or maybe some experience sharing? Yes. Awesome. Um, you know what? If someone does have something to say, because Kelsey, what you said there was amazing, and it's too bad that most of the people didn't hear that. So I'll insist. Get up, and uh, so the next person with, sorry? Uh, yeah, sure. I think it was really great. It was really great. You've got, you've got 45 seconds to repeat it. <laughs> Run. You've got some hungry people oh, here, wow. but over here, Kelsey. Yeah, thank you. Test, test, awesome. So I just wanted to say, give examples of the retail, but don't focus on the product, right? A lot of times we get caught up on selling that product. What does that do? Uh, sorry, focus more on what it does, right? What's the outcome? What's the story that that product's gonna tell as opposed to just what the product is? So, does that make sense? Awesome, yeah. Oh. I think there was one more hand. Uh, Kate, is it you? Yeah. Okay. Um, Last person was tall. Um, so I've just noticed like a lot of what Snugs is doing is like with Clearmount as a brand and Sig as a brand, I'm trying to really grow them as like solid brands that people ask for. They don't want an X award, they want Clearmount's award. So when you are building your brand, even for Sobe or Boost, is like how do you go that it's a Sobe promo that we go with or it's a Snug items we go with? Do you have an actual strategic plan for your brand? Or are you kind of like, this feels good, let's do it? I mean, I think, um, I mean, I've been around for a while, unfortunately. <laughs> and so uh, I think at this point and this juncture of Snugs as a brand, uh, and I think the people that are on board and the leadership and, and where we want to go, uh, 
we just want to have fun at this point. And we want to put out content that is uh, as enlightening and, and humorous. And we want to have people in the office that are, are a joy to be around. And I think that is really just our, our strat strategy at this point right now is just we have so little time and time is so finite that I think we have just evolved over time of, of beating our head against the walls. All right, now, no, we just want to have a good time. We want to have good relationships with our customers. We want to put out fun content. We want to do crazy video. And does it convert? I don't know. But coming in on Monday seems <laughs> sure is a, is a good time. And I think just that formula for us has been, has been wildly successful. Yeah, and I think for us, we don't necessarily, I, like I, I always look at our brand as a, it's a service, right? We're sort of selling an experience more than an actual product because there's nothing that I sell that anybody in this room couldn't source and sell to our customers. Um, so we make sure that when you leave or you have the final end product, your experience was amazing from start to finish. Um, and I think that's very important is people don't think about the experience of actually buying something. So how quick was response rate? Um, did the virtuals look good? Did it come back exactly as you showed it? Did you follow up after you sold it? Um, and I think also share your success stories, right? So one of, the good, one of the things that we do well in branding is we share our success stories via social media, like, you know, X client did this and it was a huge hit here at the trade show, check it out on this video. Um, I just think certain things like that go a long way in branding. Um, but keep in mind there's, you know, you, you really have to take step back and look at your brand and find out what your core values are and say this is what we're going to concentrate on because everybody wants to try and do so many different marketing things but you'll run you'll sort of muddle the what you're trying to say um, by trying to take on too many things with that marketing if that makes sense so concentrate on what's working invest in that and, and go from there so. all right thank you so much what an awesome morning